Alexis Maybank, what inspired you and Alexandra to start Guilt Group? We decided to pursue this passion that we had for New York City sample sale shopping. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a designer-only sale in which you get a coveted invitation, you drop everything, you show up for goods at 70% off. So we were inspired by this model that was only available in New York, and we actually partnered with another co-founder, Kevin Ryan, who personally had seen a model similar in Europe really take off and thought, wow, this could really work in the U.S. Well, there's a lot of fashion sites out there. What does Guilt Group do differently that makes it so special? Guilt really revolutionized online shopping in a few ways. One, it's appointment shopping. So every day at noon, we start up to about 15 new sales. Uh, each sale features one brand at 70% off. And that way in which we're introducing constantly new, fresh inventory every day, we're, we're virtually turning over our store 150 times a week. So that's one. The second was in the way in which we brought editorial into the shopping process. Editorial, I mean, is the, a magazine-like experience where you're flipping through these beautiful, inspiring pages. But for the first time on Guilt, one click away, you could purchase those items. Are you still able to get the great inventory, though? Because a lot of people go to Guilt because they know they can get the good stuff. But now that you're out there and you're popular, are you seeing some of your competitors trying to eat away and get that good inventory before you do? Well, inventory is, is certainly available to us at the end of season at fantastic prices, but given our size now, we're actually directly partnering with so many brands to, to are making specific products for us, capsule collections only available on Guild Group. So getting available inventory has not been a problem for us. Now, you were there at the very beginning as the co-founder. How are you managing the size? Because you're not a small little player anymore. You're not a startup. You're a serious player now. How does that work with you in terms of hiring and, and the growth process? Well, just to put it into context, today we have over a thousand employees. We turn through a half billion dollars worth of merchandise on our in our in our virtual store, and this all happened in a, a bit under three years' time. So we've gone through one of the fastest cycles of hyper growth in recent memory, and it's a very tough process to manage. Every quarter, it seems like we're bringing in new people, more people than maybe existed the prior. And uh, every quarter, something does break. This is actually something we talk about in the book, how to manage hyper growth. But really, it requires very good corporate discipline to say, OK, this is what's next going to have to be rebuilt, re, uh, reconsidered, and putting resources behind it before it actually breaks and brings down the business, like warehouse distribution, site infrastructure, et cetera. And you actually had this hyper growth through the financial crisis. What was it like trying to uh, come through with a startup that aimed at high end individuals, a lot of Wall Street bankers shopping for clothing during the financial downturn? Well, we started really growing about a year before uh, the big downturn that we saw with Lehman Brothers uh, in 2008. So we were right at that upward turn in the uh, hockey stick, if you will. And then all of a sudden, all this inventory came on the market. So it really helped meet a customer demand. We were already seeing spike. Uh, what we really did that at that time that I think was beneficial is we gave people tremendous value. They could still pursue items, luxury, fashion, design that they wanted, but at even more compelling prices. So it really struck a with our customers. Investment bankers need a deal too, right? Investment, investment bankers need a deal, our consumers need a deal, and they really cared how they were projecting themselves at that time as they were often searching for work or whatever it might have been. Now those same investment bankers might be coming get back to take Guilt Group public. Tell me what your plans are uh, for perhaps an IPO in the next year or two. We've mentioned publicly that it wouldn't be before 2013, but it's something that we're focusing on internally and discussing to see if it makes sense for us as a business. This market is stock tickers market. Stocks have rallied this year. We're coming into a Monday where we're going to.